This week we're on the Peshtigo River, the mouth of the Peshtigo River here in Green Bay out of Wisconsin here. And this is big fish country, you know, and basically in the spring these big fish move up into these tributaries of spawn. We're one of the best anglers in this part of the world, Eric Hadia. We've been friends for a long time. It's going to be a pleasure to finally and spend finally the boat. get to get out and fish with you, yeah. And for some walleye, we were going to maybe try to trout fish, but it's windy and usually the wind makes for a good walleye bite. So. Uh, you like catching big walleyes, I like catching big walleyes. Let's see if we can catch some big walleyes. We're game for anything that bites. Awesome looking fish, man. That Healthy is. Green Bay walleyes. Beautiful. You, know, you look at Green Bay, it's just such a massive walleye fishery and you know it's just a productive body of water. But you know, you look at the springtime, these fish run up these rivers, and what's really cool about it is you'll see people catching fish from shore. You're gonna see big boats out here, small boats out here. You know, it just doesn't matter what you have for equipment. This is an opportunity where you can experience some incredible fishing, you know, regardless of how big a boat you have. Or they got some spunk to them. Feel them smack it? <laughs> yeah. All right, buddy. Feels like a good fish. Oh, it is a good one. Oh, yeah, there's some Green Bay gold. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yo, buddy. Oh, oh, oh. Nice fish. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, oh yeah, that's that. a, that's oh, a I see you got that fish. gold tungsten on there, huh? Yeah. Get that fish unhooked. You know, this is just classic river fishing. You know, we're spot locked on the edge of the channel. Current coming behind us. And we're just pitching right up on that break. There's just sand that comes up. You know, that channel's in about nine, 10 feet. And we're just pitching up into four to five feet. I got one. I don't know if it's in the mouth. It is. You got it's a good, good one there too? Yeah. If we it's are in the mouth, it. it's a good fish. There's so many fish that are dumping back here. You got suckers, you got walleyes, you got muskies, smallmouth. Everything's using these stained rivers coming in and out of the bay now. You throw a rattle bait, a blade bait, a jig, all that stuff works. But sometimes there's so many fish you're dragging through me. I'll hook one now and then. You know, we're not pounding the fish today. Definitely got to work for them. All I'm doing is just casting plastic straight down the current and dragging it up. Here he comes. So uh, a little, uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. Jason just caught a couple of them on this gold jig head, this new tungsten jig. So I switched up. Of course, I put the old tungsten jig head on and it's got a paddle tail. That's it. Just a little paddle tail, tungsten jig head, walleyes all day long here in Green Bay. These plastics trigger bigger fish. You know, a lot of times these fish just jump on it or they're just there, you know, your rod is just gonna load up. You know, the bites are pretty distinct. You know, they, they attack those baits. And so, and the bait might be anywhere from say three inches up to four inches long. And a lot of times we're using a paddle tail just so that it moves water so these fish can find that bait in the stained water. Because that paddle tail moves water, it displaces water, just offers a profile that these fish can find. Then obviously you can use all kinds of bright colors as well. And so plastics have become really, really popular on rivers. And you know, a lot of times you're just using a medium fat seven foot to six foot graphite rod with anywhere from eight to ten pound braid tie a two to three foot fluorocarbon leader and you know that's basically the setup but you know and that gives you a lot of flexibility you can cast you can drag and you know a lot of times we'll drag up the seam and then we'll fan cast and just use a spot lock when we're fishing these rivers you know these clamp pro tackle drop tg series they've got a really large wide gap hook I'm under the belief that if you use a hook, the bigger the better in the sense that you can just keep fish pinned up a lot more, especially if you're trying to keep big fish pinned up. But you know, I look at it this way, if you catch a fish on say a spinner bait, you can hoist that fish right in the boat, catch a fish on a live bait rig and a tiny little octopus hook, you got a lot of times net the fish. You know, I like to use a jig with a wider gap hook when I'm using plastics especially. In fact, I'll use the biggest hook I can get away with. What do we have here? Oh, it's a walleye. On a jig. You know what, Jason? I put on one of them, one of the new CPT tungsten jigs. It's the first time I've 
tried one of these things and I love it. You want to know what I like about it? I love uh, how small of a jig you can get away with here We're fishing the river right now. This little tiny jig head actually is about a quarter ounce because it's tungsten. It's a new tungsten jig head made by Clam. And you know what's great about tungsten? It's, it's good for the environment, but more importantly, you can feel more with a smaller diameter jig head. So you can cast it farther with a smaller jig head. So check them out. They're good little jig heads new on the market. Feel like a heavy fish? Yeah, he hit it pretty good. Good, I'll get reeled up here and get the net here for you. I like these rods you got here. <laughs> My first time using good old Jason Mitchell series rods. Jason <laughs> brought me one to use, and I tell you what, I like it, Jason. It's really good. nice, it's light. I'll, I'm even gonna let you keep it. Oh, that's all, look at this, that's a nice fish. There we go, there we go. All right, nice. Golden walleye, here, let me unhook that fish here quick. Oh, there you there go. Beautiful. Show off your prize there. Nice one. Yeah. Yeah, just golden color. Nice and Beautiful good. looking fish right there. All right. Every tributary that pretty much dumps into the bay here in the spring from the Fox River, O'Connell, Pesh, you know, we're in the Peshtigo now, but the Menominee, then you go even into Michigan, like uh, the Cedar River. They all have walleyes that come up in them in the spring and you can legally fish them. It's one fish that you can you can keep, but we release all the big fish here and basically once you keep your one fish, you're done walleye fishing. You have to pike fish or fish trout or something else. So kind of just, you know, in place until the opening weekend here, you guys can come out here and fish walleyes. You can troll them up, you can fish from shore, fish from waders up at the dams here. A lot of good fishing on the tribs up and down here, and especially for big fish. You know, you yeah, got, that's what people come out here for, yeah, is that you're chance. Yeah, you coming here for a shot at a, you know, a 30, a 32 inch, or that happens all the time in Green Bay. Here, here's one. Want me to grab the net? Yeah, here I'll, the current's pulling on her now. You know, I don't think these fish, they don't seem to be really stacked up in here, but they're just kind of filtering through. One here, one there, but boy, they sure do add up. Oh yeah, look at there, Here's another nice walleye. All right, thank you, sir. Yeah, that was a fun bite. <laughs> look at that. As soon as that jig hit the, the bottom, it just went a, just a classic thump. We've been experimenting with a few different tails and doesn't really seem to make no rhyme or reason. A little bit of everything's been working, but they seem to definitely like that edge though, that, that break that comes up from say four feet down to eight, nine feet along that seam. That's like the highway that these fish are using as they're coming back out in the bay. And what a migration this must be. More of fish that come up into some of these tributaries. Look at all the fish that are out on Green Bay. And the fact that you know they're all gonna come up into some of these rivers here. It's a pretty impressive fishing opportunity. You know, every spring, usually in the end of March or early April, once the ice starts to thaw here in Green Bay, you're going to get that spring migration. Pretty much every, every walleye that's in Green Bay is going to start migrating up shallow, whether they're going to come and spawn up in the river or whether they're going to come spawn uh, up and down these shorelines, everywhere throughout the bay. Once that, that water temp kind of hits that magic mark of that 38 to 42 degrees, they all move up shallow. So that's one of the best opportunities if you're looking to catch a really, really big walleye is to come here to Green Bay. You can get them pre-spawn here in March sometimes. And this year it's been exceptionally cold. So um, it's been a much better bite here in April now. You know, when it comes to fishing rivers, especially side scanning can be just an invaluable tool. And you know, a lot of times 
When we're using side scanning, yes, you can see fish, and a lot of times how I describe fish is it looks like almost like a little piece of rice, just a little brighter, longer mark, and then there'll be a shadow next to it. And typically how high the fish is off the bottom is the further the shadow is from that mark. But the other thing, especially with rivers, is you know, you're trying to read that structure and it might be just you know, a washout hole and it might be a, a log jam, it might be a cut, it might be, you know, a, a dip in the sand. A lot of times you'll just see these troughs and these just these ripples where the, the sand gets pushed around. And so you can you can physically see where these fish are gonna lay and you can visualize it. And a lot of times when you're using the spot lock, you know it's there, then you can cast to it. But side imaging really opens up river fishing especially. You know, there's a lot of different tributaries that dump into Green Bay here that are good each spring. Every river, every tributary's got its own population of fish that run up in and spawn. And, you know, it's just a neat part of the world because on any given cast, on any given day, you have the opportunity to catch really, really big fish. I'm talking walleyes over 30 inches, plus the exotic stuff like the occasional steelhead or brown or smallmouth bass. And so, you know, so it's just big fish country. And that's what I love about fishing off of Green Bay. Nice fish, two big ones. Big yep, one. yep, right below the boat right again. Right below the boat, buddy. Yes, Jason. Nice pig. Dude, you're just dragging that right next to the boat in five <laughs> yep. feet of water. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Here she All comes. All right, buddy. Oh, yeah. Look nice, at that. Jason. <laughs> nice job. Boy, look at that. Those jaws clamped down on that jig. Nice fish. Try to get that tail back. <laughs> there we go. Open up there. <laughs> wow. Look at that. These fish are just gorgeous. And they fight hard too, with just a combination of the current and there. Wow. I've noticed that even out here in the summertime. I don't know just how clear the water is, but you hear that walleyes don't fight hard, but you get these fish within 15 feet of the boat. These fish just go berserk. They fight hard. That's fun fishing. So here in Green Bay in the spring and the end of March and April, it's a one fish daily bag limit, 15 inch size limit. And, and most of us guides that are up here, we are practicing catch and release on all of the big females and all of the big fish. So if guys wanna keep fish, we pretty much try to encourage them to keep fish that are under you know, 24 inches. And then those really big fish, 28, 29, 30, 31 inches, we're trying to let all those big fish go because there's some really good natural reproduction going on in Green Bay here. And it's important to keep that good brood stock of those big fish, you gotta take good care of them. So we like to release them and even encourage uh, replicas when guys come up here and catch those giant fish. Feel like a good one? It does. It's got some weight. All right. Liking those head shakes, too. Here he comes. Here he comes. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice job. Nice fish. Nice. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the little paddle tail, the tungsten jig. That's all you need right there, folks, if you want to come up here to Green Bay and catch some walleyes. Look at the battle scars on this fish. Swimming up that current, it's probably had debris from this high water hitting it. You just see the scratch, scuff marks on his face. Isn't that cool? Post-spawn Green Bay walleyes. Awesome. All right, we'll get her back. Wow. Good one? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, just, I just love that type of a strike. Oh, where yeah. just that, yeah, that, that. you know, we talked about bringing the trolling stuff and you, you guys can come up here trolling if they want to troll. And then we just talked about it and said, you know what? We both prefer to jig, let's jig. Yeah, I mean, I'll catch fish however. It doesn't matter, but tell you what, if I can catch fish on a jig, oh yeah, this is a good fish. There he is. Well, we're back in the wind and we're back into a few walleyes. Oh yeah, nice fish. I saw that strike, that was cool. Yeah, they thumped it, you know, just drag you it a, and right on the pot. You wow. had a hair trigger. <laughs> you got what, about a three foot fluorocarbon leader on there? Yep. That's typically the program, eight to 10 pound braid. Eight pound fluorocarbon leader. Behind the boat? Yeah. All right. Nice. Hooked up, buddy, hooked up again. We got wind today, so we had to slide up the river. It's just too windy to get out on the bay. Here, when you're ready here, I'll grab the net here. 
Here he comes. Oh yeah. Really nice walleye. Nice and nice fish. Hey, hey. Yeah, buddy. Nice job. Nice job. A nice healthy looking fish. What's unique about Green Bay in the spring, which is so different in Lake Erie for you guys that are planning a walleye trip, if it gets really, really rough, you can always get out of the wind here. And even if you get a bunch of rain, you can still fish these tributaries because they don't blow out and turn into chocolate milk. Like the Peshtigo, it's always fishable. So it's a really cool, unique system. Where else can you go? There's not a lot of places you can go in the spring and have legitimate shots at catching 30 plus inch walleyes, casting jigs. I mean, it happens all the time here every day. That's what makes Green Bay unique. And that's why I've been coming up here for over 20 years is because I really like catching big fish and Green Bay is kind of the mecca. Here we go. Oh, wow. Hooked up? Yeah, this is a good one here. All right. Right next to the bolt, huh? Yeah, right at the bottom of the cast. Oh, nice. Nice fish. Oh, strapper. All right. Here we go. Come here, buddy. Come here. All right. There we go. Nice right. right there. Nice job. That is a good one. And the old gold tungsten jig again. Yep. Yep, just gorgeous. All right, nice job, buddy. Pinned up right at the top of the beak. Good looking yeah, fat fish. They are, aren't they? All right. Here, I'll get that in the water. Oh, wow, that fish took off. Nice job, buddy. Yeah, no, just a slide and drag. Cast, slide, and drag. Pretty simple fishing. And some of these bites are just, I mean, you think, oh, early in the year, these fish aren't aggressive, whatever, but you know what? The way these fish hit these soft plastics at times. And yeah, they <laughs> thump it. Yeah. I mean, it is just a whack with the, you know, just that braided line fluorocarbon leader combination. You're using a good graphite rod. It's, the strikes can almost be electric at times, just how, how hard the hit is. And that's fun fishing. I don't know of anybody that doesn't love catching fish on a jig like this. You know, a lot of times when you're fishing rivers, the current can change and you know the, the flow can increase and de it can decrease. When you're looking at the mouth of a river like this and you have strong wind pushing upriver, that'll create some back eddies. And so the sweet spots where these fish are laying, that, that changes by the hour. And so you know, a lot of times we'll drag upstream, we'll drag through those holes along the edge of these channel breaks, but at the same time, don't be afraid as you're dragging up just to cast around the boat and just find where those spots are because a lot of times you make a cast off one angle of the boat and pop one fish. A lot of times we'll just hit spot lock and just keep making casts there. And, you know, you might pop four or five more fish. And so a lot of times these fish will be stacked up in little areas and, you know, between the dragging and the casting, it enables you to find fish. And once you find fish, you just use that spot lock where it's just so precise where you just keep putting the hammer down on them. All right, Jason. Hooked up. That's oh, a good yeah. one, buddy. That's that a does good look one. like a big one. This is a good one. Look at those big head shakes. You know what I'm doing is I'm just firing that jig, that little tungsten jig, just a tiny little tungsten jig down, down the river, just dragging them paddle tails up and pausing it. And thump, man, did this fish thump it hard. I like these rods, Jason. See that? You get to do a fishing show with good old Jason Mitchell and you get a free rod on top of it. You can't go wrong. Yeah. It's, it's coming on this side. All right. This is a good one here. This is the one we want. Yeah, this is the star of the show. This is a good fish. Yeah, it is. That's what's so cool. You come to these tributaries, you got a shot at, you know, if you want to catch a 30 inch or casting or jigging, that's, that's pretty cool to, to be able to do that. Special place here, these tributaries in Green Bay. That's why I put the trout rods down and come yeah. up here for about a month and take a break on the trout and chase these big walleyes and smallmouth. Yeah, pretty cool. Oh, that's a good fish, man. Yeah, let's maybe switch spots. I'll get downstream from you here. There we go. Big fish. That's a big one right there. Wow. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at this. Look at that. That's a nice fish. Yeah. Oh, and that's just so gold. Beautiful looking fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, just see if you can bring her up. That current. 
Here we go, got her. <laughs> oh yay, man. Look at the look at the jaws on that fish. It looks like an ice cream bucket. Oh man. <laughs> an ice cream bucket. Look with at teeth. this thing. Yeah, she thunk that chick too. That is cool. Beautiful fish. Look at that fish. Is that beautiful or what? That is beautiful. It's just a beautiful Green Bay walleye. You just tell it's nice a big fish thick. by just how thick those cheeks yeah. are. That is awesome, okay? All right, get her back. Yeah, gorgeous. Cool, that is yeah. cool. A lot of places That's what we came you get those for. big fish that get all pale and beat up and washed up and you just, fish that big and that gorgeous is unbelievable. So, yeah, they've got that golden Green. color to them here, you know, and we're fishing these stained rivers. You know, like I said, you know, here you can get away from a lot of people. That's what I like about it too. You know, there's no one else around us and you can scoot up and down here and you can catch big walls. Gotta love that, buddy. Love it. Love it. Jigging. <laughs> 